My most memorable moment was I returned match figures of none for 140 on debut. <laughs> And they picked me for the next test. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 10 of the Kerry O'Keefe Show and thank you for supporting the previous nine. Um, we were humbled by the fact that over 5,000 of you viewed the Imran Khan story. Thanks. It's a good yarn. I enjoyed telling it again. Uh, but this is episode 10. Uh, we want you to continue to support it if you can by registering on the Patreon account because we're running out of funds and it's on a shoestring already. This is a smell of an oily rag show. <laughs> so please register on Patreon. We've had a couple, we want more. And our first Patreon question today is for James Thompson, who asks, what's your opinion on, and do, do you think it's a realistic possibility the big bash will be played on Christmas day in the future? Well, thanks for the question, James. It's a reasonable question given that overseas a lot of sport is played on Christmas Day. But come on. Uh, Christmas Day play would mean players moving uh, to the venue the day before, which would rule out Christmas at home. There's so many negatives. Um, I know that there are pluses. You don't have to kiss chain-smoking aunts who reek of sherry. <laughs> You don't have to say just what I've always wanted. Like when you get underpants and deodorant. <laughs> As if you've never had it before. You don't, you know, you don't have to sleep at three o'clock in the afternoon. That can be avoided if you're about, if you, if you're about to play Big Bash. There are some pluses. But uh, although the Big Bash is, is eating everything up, it shouldn't eat Christmas. Um, but we'll, we'll ask a higher being about that. <laughs> Even he might say, yeah, I'm not standing in the way of the big bash. <laughs> I know it was the day I was born, but yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> watching me in a nativity scene or watching the ball go 120 metres, your choice. <laughs> <laughs> but James, thanks for the question. I really can't see... Uh, the Big Bash being played on, on Christmas Day, but we'll see. Uh, Warwick Foster asks, and thanks for the question, Warwick, could you talk about what it was like opening the batting in the centenary test? Well, it was fabulous. It was the Australia v England, 1977 in Melbourne, 65,000 people, and I became an Australian opening test batsman. Feather in my cap. I mean, I played 170 first-class games, I played 24 tests, and people come up and say, you're the bloke that opened. <laughs> it's like the frog joke. I worked 13 years for the ABC, people come up and say, Scar, your best work was the frog joke. It was eight years before I retired. <laughs> Chang Alamos regrets wearing those white boots. But... You're remembered for a few things. I'm remembered for this. I mean, I love to opening the batting. There's been 450 players wear the baggy green. I don't know how many opening batsmen there have been. Um, I was probably the only opening batsman leg spinner. Well, specialist leg spinner. Um, it's, a, it's a very elite club. In fact, if I go to a reunion, I'll just seek out other opening batsmen. We'll have a secret handshake. Yeah, we won't talk to the number threes. We particularly will ignore number 11s. <laughs> I'll just look for ones and twos. Yeah, there's a, only a few of us around. Yeah. What, what, what do we all have in common? Courage? Don't know whether I had that. <laughs> I was crapping myself. <laughs> um, I replaced Rick McCosker, who had a broken jaw. Um, Greg Chappell tapped me on the shoulder after we bowled England out. Gave me eight and a half minutes to get nervous. He said, if I gave you any longer, you probably wouldn't have turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Strategic. Uh, but yeah, put on 33 with Ian Davis, my opening partner. Yeah, it was great. He must have thought that third man had a good arm because when I worked one off Bob Willis in the second over down to third man 80 metres away, he said, wait. <laughs> oh. I'm an opener, not a night watchman. Good old wizard. But we won that test and uh, 
people say the opening partnership in the second innings was not a factor. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for bringing it up, Warwick. Uh, I'm interested if there are any stati statisticians out there. How many opening batsmen have been uh, have there been in the 450 Australian Test cricketers? I'm thinking about 50 or 60. Interesting question. Question three. David uh, Moran asks, is Michael Clark more cut out for coaching or commentary? Well, it's a good question. I would say commentary. I think his work for Channel 9 this summer has been very good. Uh, I think uh, if you get contemporary views on the game, they're to be applauded. And Michael Clark, if you look at the analysis that he offered through the summer, was fantastic. Uh, I, just as Ricky Ponting on the Big Bash gives you insights that the others can't because of his contemporary view of the game, so Michael Clark gives you the same. I thought he was a big plus for Channel 9 this year. Uh, Mark Nicholas was missed. Uh, understand he's coming back for the T20s. That's a plus for them. And I thought Kevin Peterson was very good. Um, Polarising figure, KP, but gee, I thought some of the, uh, the, the insights he offered were were really good. Um, you, you can ignore him uh, if you want, but KP, as Michael Clark does, offers you a view from the centre and, and a view from the recent centre, and that's got to be applauded at Channel 9. Question four. Bus driver bludger. Don't know how you get that to handle, but well done. Thanks for the question, bus driver bludger. And you've asked, is Macken the new Joe Angel? Well, Simon Macken is this ten, uh, six foot ten Western Australian fast bowler who gets wickets for fun in the Sheffield Shield. Uh, we saw Billy Stanlake debut this year. Uh, he's six foot ten. So is this fellow. I think he's a better bowler, maybe. Bowls, nippy outswing, bounces it. Is he Joe Angel? There's a little bit of that in him, but the revelation in this recent Shield game, and not lost on coach Justin Langer, was the 17-year-old sensation Cameron Green, six foot eight, still growing, bouncy outswing. Hello, passport to wickets throughout the world. Put him down for uh, one for the little black book. Cameron Green kept nipping it past and in onto the outside edge of the Tasmanian batsman, took five for 24 on debut. And some of his bowling in that five was unplayable. I don't know what they got in Western Australia, but they keep producing these tall um, outswing bowlers that get people out. Cameron Green is the latest and I know Trevor Holmes and his uh, selection panel will be interested in his development. Uh, but I agree, Macken could be Angel, but Green could be Hazelwood. Look out. Final question for today. Grant Diva asks, if you were Craig Williams, uh, would you ride, or who would you ride in the Blue Diamond? <laughs> if I was Craig Williams, and I was allowed to ride at 91 kilos, I would ride Catchy, the, uh, the filly trained by David Hayes and Davenig. I think it's an absolute special at $4.80. Um, not refunding any money if it doesn't, but if I was to give you a tip you know, for the Blue Diamond Stakes in a couple of weeks, I'd, I'd back Catchy, ridden by Craig Williams. Get on. Thanks for your company again today. It's been a blast answering your questions. Uh, hope to see you next week. <laughs> oh, that is gold. Oh, hello there. Sorry, just uh, just reading something I picked up from uh, St. Vinnie's. <laughs> I wrote it. I told the, the chick behind the desk, I wrote this. She said, 75 cents. I said, done. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best of my first two books. It's called Skullduggery, still available at uh, you know, respected bookshops. 
and anywhere else you can pick it up in the bargain and bin out the front. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the, pa the Patheon account is there for you if you'd like to support the show. I'm just, my son and I are having so much fun bringing these shows to you. I want them to continue. Uh, there's a lot of cricket coming up. Australia begin in India in a couple of weeks. I can't wait for that. I'd love to be able to bring you my views on each of the tests. Um, and of course there's the Champions Trophy in England and the Ashes next summer. So looking forward to your company. Love you to support the Patreon account. Thanks. Back to Skullduggery. <laughs> what a blast.